Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor. This is your go to show for your best bets ahead of the weekend. And on this week's show, we are going to be having a little bit of a mix of races, really, because of course it is Irish Guineas weekend. We will be having a look at the 2000 and the 1000 Guineas at the Curra. As well as that, we'll also be looking at Haydock's Saturday card. But as a Brucey bonus, we will also be giving our first tips ahead of Royal Alaska as we take aim at the Queen Anne. And I'm going to be looking at these races in my usual company of Declan Ricks and Sam Boswell. Sam, very well done with the winners last week. You must be pretty pleased. Yeah, yeah, we all did a really, really good mm. good show, didn't we? And uh, it was quite nice to be at Newbury. We sponsored, obviously, the Betway to London Gold Cup and to put the winner up of that felt pretty pretty chuffed as Ryan Moore came in uh, and had him a trophy and got a small smile out of Ryan, which uh, I think it feels like an achievement. That will count as your third winner then on the day because, of course, you did have Bert, uh, Bert Nelly, Haskoy and Ryan Moore then with a, with a little smile as well. <laughs> Deck, our nap went in. We were really strong on modern games, so thank goodness that came off. And you also had Haskoy. Yeah, he came good, didn't he? I was kind of a little bit worried maybe mid-race. I didn't think he travelled as sweetly as he usually do, as he can do. But uh, maybe he's getting a little bit older, a little bit wiser. But uh, the, there was a power packed finish to him there uh, and he won. So, yeah, it was a, a good week. So, but you're only as good as your last winner, as they say. So, yeah, that'll long be forgotten if we don't tip a winner this week. I know, as you said on last week's show, but at least the pair of you two were in form then to manage to bring that back again. So hopefully we can keep the ball rolling and find you some more winners this week. But a reminder, as always, that our tips are not guaranteed to win, but we will still do our best to point you in the right direction anyway. So please do remember to gamble responsibly and also please do remember to like and subscribe to the at the races youtube channel so you never miss an episode we recently hit 100 million views on the platform so that was fantastic thank you so much for all of your continued support and hopefully we can reach another milestone soon enough but we had better crack on with the racing because we are going to begin with the big one on saturday the irish 2000 guineas now this race it of course over a mile for the three-year-old Colts at the car at 340. I think it's fair to say this isn't quite the race we were hoping for of no Chaldean or Al Riffa, but Declan, would you like to kick us off with this classic, please? Yeah, I'd agree. It doesn't look that the strongest renewal, to be honest, um, and that's why I think kind of Royal Scotsman, as the betting suggests, is the most likely winner. Uh, he had a very good two-year-old campaign last year. Apart from uh, when he ran in the gym crack and he scoped dirty after the race, he improved with every single run. Uh, obviously, he ran a crack in the Coventry, won the Richmond, and then he was also second in the Dewhurst behind the uh, the Guineas winner. Um, he ran an absolute stormer, I thought, in the Guineas, given a couple of, given a couple of things. One really was the main the main worry and how he run was how keen he was. Um, like to be so keen for so long on that softening ground to run as well as he did, I thought it just it's a, a big testament to the horse's class and raw ability. And then late things didn't pan out great for him as well. The, the race probably developed a little bit away from him. So I think getting back on some on, on better ground is going to help him get home. Uh, Jamie Spencer is obviously going to replace uh, Jim Crowley this weekend. You know, couldn't get a better jockey in the weighing room to, to, um, to help settle his mount. He's going to need Jamie's hands to get the best out of him. Um, he's a horse usually who hits the gates well, he jumps well and he gets into stride well. Jamie, I'm hoping, can maybe just get him to miss the gates half a beat and get him covered up and just, just uh, that's the key, I think, pace and cover up just to, just to utilise all that raw pace he has late in the race. So, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's a weak renewal and I'm kicking off with a favour, but I, I do think Royal Scotsman will, will take an awful lot of beating. Yeah, and Connections probably, they couldn't have been happier, really, could they, with this just a golden opportunity to get a classic win. So it's Royal Scotsman for deck Sam who are you siding with yeah in agreement that I don't think the race is potentially up to the renewals and you think the likes of Kingman and Clamford Cliffs have, have won it but I've kind of gone quite left field I think and, and found a really unexposed horse at an each way price in in Kay Shamar who runs here for Jessica Harrington and just seen the twice on debut at the Curra, bombed out a little bit on the soft ground. That's what the rider blamed that day. And then since has gone to uh, Dundalk and won on the all-weather uh, against Naden O'Brien horse, who, who has since won and finished second. So there's a little bit of substance to that form. A huge step up forward is required here. But this horse definitely, I think, on paper has the opportunity to do that. Um, I looked at the draw. Doesn't seem to be that much of a bias, but interestingly, three of the last four winners have come from uh, box one where he's drawn. And I just thought around 18 to one, it was a little bit bigger actually when I did my homework and we've seen a couple of each way bets and early betting for it. And I just thought when you get a renewal that perhaps lacks a superstar, 
I wanted something that could potentially step forward and, and just think he ticks those boxes. Yeah, and a big price as well mm. then. So, And it is just that kind of a race where the renewal this year, it looks open for an each way play with a horse that is as unexposed as he is. So I'm also going with the each way play where I agree with you, Deck, that Royal Scotsman is definitely the horse to beat here. And the fact that this is just looks at a really golden opportunity for us with a lot of ability and a lot of pace. But because, uh, not to give it away, but I'm siding with a few favourites later <laughs> on in the show. So for now, I'm going to take the opportunity to have a different angle into this race. And my different angle is proud and regal each way who again he's just he's the only group one winner in the field and his second to Al Riffer in the national stakes was a seriously good run and if Al Riffer was in here I mean what price would he be in this lineup he's already had three starts at this track which could well prove pivotal then as well with the experience that he's already shown at the Curra and he'll likely come forwards plenty for his third on his reappearance start over 10 furlongs testing conditions Drop back in trip could also suit him. And his group one win did come over this trip of a mile in France previously last season. So he's each way alternative for against Royal Scotsman then for me for all that I think he's the most likely winner. But Proud and Regal's been laid out for this. So him for me. Deck, just to reiterate. I am all aboard the Royal Scotsman train. Chew, chew. <laughs> chew, chew for Deck, Sam. Okay, Shamal, for me, each way on better ground, I think uh, the unexposed angle is going to be the one I'll be clinging to in this race. I'm clinging to, right. Chew, chew and clinging to. So <laughs> <laughs> very different uh, versions of confidence there. But do let us know your own selections for the Irish 2,000 guineas in the comments section below. Now, on Sunday, we do have the Irish 1,000 guineas. As we record on Friday morning, we don't have declarations. We don't even have betting then at this stage because we don't know the makeup of the lineup at this time. But we're still going to look ahead to the race anyway. So, Sam, would you like to kick us off, please? It comes up at 3.50 at, uh, at the Curra, of course, again. So who did you like the look of? Yeah, I mean, listen, if Tahira turns up here, warrants huge respect. But I just do have a small question mark about the ground for when you look through what she's run on. Um, and I think the race at Newmarket, for all it was a very impressive effort to just get touched off there. It's got to have taken more out of, out of her than I'd say that the Meditate ended up back in six and just didn't seem to, to like the ground. And we know we'll prefer a faster surface uh, at the prices that potentially you're going to get when Tahir is going to be that sort of short price, what, one to two, something like that. I just thought Meditate was possibly a bit of an each way bet to nothing to, to bounce back. Obviously, there is a little bit of an issue. It's quite a quick turnaround, isn't it? I think 21 days. days. Yeah, you know, I, I suppose that's probably, you could you could probably say, would you want to be taking that about a short price favourite? I, I know Meditate's been put in her place by the favourite previously, but I just think that quicker ground, I'm willing to take a chance. And I think you'll get a, a bit of an each way play to, to nothing, kind of. I think she'll be in the three. Yeah, she was, she's much better than she yeah. showed last time out anyway after the whole host of Ballydore disappointed at Newmarket then. So meditate to bounce back to better form for Sam. But Deck, how are you playing it? Yeah, well, look, I, I'm not going to play it at all at the moment because we don't have the draw, we don't have the pace and whatnot. But I think to here is going to, she will be the selection. Whether or not she's a bet now, I know only can really decide that when once we see the decks and see the, the pace and the draw and all that because I think the draw and pace is going to be is going to be key to her. Look, she ran an incredible race in the Guineas. Um, I think her and Marsh put se pulled seven and a half lengths clear of the third. The time I thought was very strong as well. There was a three-year-old only handicap an hour and ten minutes after the Guineas, uh, and they butchered that time. Um, and I just thought the Guineas, she ran a cracker. I thought the first three furlongs of the race, apart from her maybe being a little bit slow and awkward away, uh, that was probably by design. I think Chris Hayes was probably just trying to get her back so he, he can get cover. The first three furlongs of the race went perfectly for her. She got cover and a good lead everywhere. But the, just from there on, Chris, uh, Chris Hayes pulled her out. And I just thought she saw daylight far too soon. I think she's a horse blessed with an awful lot of pace, an awful lot of class. I just think the longer you can keep her covered up, uh, the better. She was also unlucky. I thought Maj intimidated her a little bit going into the dip and she changed her legs got a little bit on balance as well that didn't help I think getting back onto a more conventional track on faster ground will, will suit uh, good to firm kind of quick ground would maybe be a little bit of a worry mm. but I think genuinely good ground should be no issue she's, she's not a big heavy top mare uh, I think she'd flow along the ground and uh, the quicker ground as well
well should bring out that uh, that pace she has. So yeah, I think Tahiro will take an awful lot of the uh, an awful lot of the betting, an awful lot of the beating. We'll go again. <laughs> uh, but as Sam says, you would just be a little bit worried about the backup, especially when you're back in the odds uh, like a, f a four to six or whatever. We yeah, could be which is probably what we're expecting her to go off at in the end, really, isn't it? But to be fair, at the car in comparison to the tracks that we're seeing on Saturday in this country, I don't think it's going to be as quick over there as it will be that we'll see with uh, the Goodwoods, Yorks and, and Haydocks then on Saturday in this country. But I agree that that she will take an awful lot of beating though to Hero, which will be obviously very frustrating for me after siding with her then in the Guineas and still managing to get chinned. But she should really be, be winning this, even with that turnaround and even with the quicker ground conditions. But again, with an each way opportunity, hopefully for this race with a horse that, well, you'd be hoping it's going to run in Jackie O because she's been supplemented mm. for 50,000 euros. So you'd really be hoping that she will be getting her run here after just two starts. And I think it's fascinating that Connections have elected to do that. Aidan O'Brien, who's won the Irish 1000 Guineas more than any other trainer, looking for an 11th win in this race. So clearly he's best positioned to know exactly what type of a filly he wants to be running in this race. The trip was always going to be a concern for her last time out. 10 furlongs, heavy ground. She was too keen in that anyway. And the filly that beat her was a proper stayer. Plenty of good experience to her name going into that anyway. And Jackie O, she just paid for those early exertions late on. The abilities there and a drop down in trip she'll suit her. So Jackie O each way for me, Deck. To hear her for me. Sam. Meditate to get the favourite beat and reverse that form. Right, we will see then exactly how that transpires on Sunday. But as I say, by the time you watch this, you will have full declarations and then the draw at your disposal as well. So do let us know who you are siding with. Now, we are back over to Haydock for Saturday's billing with a cracking renewal of the Group 2 Sandy Lane Stakes for three odds over six furlongs at three o'clock. A great Commonwealth Cup trial. Little Big Bear heads the market currently in a bid to bounce back from last time out. But Declan, can we trust him to bounce back well i hope so because you know we we need a star of the year you know you can never have enough stars and he definitely was the star two-year-old last year what he did in the phoenix stakes was, was incredible and as we saw last week with noble style coming back to sprinting it it, it isn't it isn't mm -hmm. easy coming from a, a a really soft kind of guineas over an uh, over a mile back to sprinting over six on quicker ground but look um i think i i was hoping before last season ended, Aidan would train him as a sprinter because he just looked a sprinter to me. He's by no name ever. I think he's out of a bearing mare, but I just think these no name evers, they sta he stamps his stock so well, uh, gets big, strong horses, precocious types, but um, you know they, he puts a lot of pace and speed into them. Um, I just hope Frankie lets him stride on because I think that's what he likes to do. I think that's how he likes to run. He had a beautiful way of going last year. He could he look to be doing it all within himself, but still going a good gallop. And then when he was asked to, cut, when he got a squeeze and he was asked to quicken, you can see his cadence changing and his legs quickening up. He's all pace. Uh, as we saw last year at the Cora in the Phoenix and the Anglesey, he does a lot of his damage in the last furlong of races. So he does stay six well. Frankie, let him stride on, let him use himself. It's a very winnable race. You know, Brad Sell's probably a candidate to bounce. Uh, Cole Case, a nice horse progressive, but I don't think he sets a remarkable standard. And I think maybe at the prices, even the, the George Bowie horse that uh, William Buick's going to ride, he's probably the value bet in the race. But I just think this has looked so, so winnable for Little Big Bear. If he can't get this done, it's going to be really disappointing with uh, Frankie Dettori taking the ride. Yeah, and you say about Frankie Dettori taking the ride from Ryan Moore, where a lot of people are talking about the jockey bookings then for that but when you've got a classic I don't really think Ryan Moore can not ride in a classic so yeah. that's why Frankie Dettori has got the ride on Little Big Bear because they say it's only a group two as such rather than a classic so I'm, I'm not actually going to be too um, perturbed by that for Little Big Bear but Sam you are a lot thinking along the same lines though. No, little Big Bear I mean I, I, that, that line about obviously Ryan choosing to go to Ireland seemed nonsense to me as well I completely agree I, I really would not worry and when you've got Frankie stepping in I think you're absolutely fine there that, that isn't a concern for me obviously the horse does need to, to, to show he can come back after what happened I, I really am prepared to put a line through the new market run that doesn't bother me I don't think there's too much depth as we've alluded to in this race in comparison to other years um, I mean I just I was really sort of just thinking it's a really easy, obvious play. And uh, 15 to 8, I know it's not an amazing price, but I'm prepared to chance him again. It's only one run you need to put a line through. Grounds come right for him. He just wins. 
and the two was we didn't mention between us and we should. He was nearly brought down in the gates. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, and what I liked is I thought that could have lit him up further, but it didn't, especially going up and trip. He was quite professional, but um, he was really lucky not to pick up a serious injury even in that race. So it's great that he's coming back to the track soon. That, look, that can't have helped as long as the ground on the day just got too soft for a lot of those mm. kind of horses like Sakir and whatnot who needed uh, good ground to help him get the trip. But uh, yeah, sorry to cut across you, buddy. It's a good oh, point. Oh, well, when you're backing each other up, <laughs> In that way, it I worked really last week, Kate. It, it worked did, last week, didn't it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So here's hoping the lightning can strike twice. Uh, but we're all in agreement with Little Big Bear, though, because I'm with him as well. I couldn't have abandoned him after uh, after the Guineas, could I? After making such a bullish case for him in the mm. 2000 Guineas. I couldn't then abandon him now, where, like I say, I'm more than willing to just draw a complete line through that. He was too keen early on, and because of those headstrong tendencies, he ended up swerving across his rivals. I believe it was actually Royal Scotsman that then struck into him. Mm. And like I say, with the three-week turnaround on the back of an injury like that, initially I was a bit concerned, but then you also have to take positives in the fact that it maybe wasn't as bad as first feared then for him. My only concern then for him was the rattling ground, where on paper, being a son of no, no, never, you think, well, no, he'll be absolutely fine for that. But he was a non-runner because of the good firm ground last season. And with a horse that's had his injury in the past of last year, that was just a little bit of a sticking point for me. But you could also say that about Bradsell, because, of course, his season last mm. season was curtailed quite early because of an injury. So him on quicker conditions is a concern. And then you look at Cold Case, you think, yeah, well, Cold Case is the solid horse in here. But I still, I know he proved himself on good ground last time out, but for me, he's still a horse where I want a bit of juice in the ground for him. So it kind of lent me full circle back <laughs> around again then to Little Big Bear, because I think that he is short enough at 15 to eight, but if he goes and wins this and I abandon him, I will absolutely <laughs> kick myself. So so there is the hat trick then for Little Big Bear in the Sandy Lane Stakes and the Group 2 at Haydock on Saturday at 3 o'clock. God help us. But if you agree, disagree, whichever, do let us know. And we'll move on to our next race. This is for 3.30 at Haydock. The following race, this is the Temple Stakes for three-year-olds and over, over five furlongs. And the Platinum Queen in different ownership, different yard, heads of betting, Holly Doyle on board at least, which keeps some sort of synergy. So Sam, how are you playing this sprint? I thought this was a cracking renewal yeah. of the race, actually really excited by it. And I, I initially looked at Twilight Calls, who having tipped him when he didn't get his ground in the end at Newmarket. But I, I think this is going to be a bit of a, a sticky test for him. And I think those two in front in the betting, the pair of them definitely set a really interesting standard. Uh, but Colbert's Philly for me dramatised. I am a huge fan of what she's achieved to date. Very unexposed in comparison to a lot of these in here. And, you know, one on debut and then followed up at Royal Ascot winning the Queen Mary. And, you know, to my eyes, when they went up in trip at York, just didn't really work. I think the trainer's representative afterwards just, just said, didn't seem to get the trip. Back down to this trip, I think she's shown that's where she wants to be. Um, the stable were a little bit quiet. Not awfully out of form, but then I, if anyone saw the national stakes uh, at Sandown, you stay at the one two Colbert with a very nice horse there. So I'm not particularly worried. Dramatised for me, I think really interesting filly. Looking forward to seeing what she can do, um, obviously, and gets a little bit of the weight. Oh, OK, then. So he made a compelling case, did Sam, for Dramatise then. And he's almost swung me around, but not quite. But we'll let you take the floor. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a case of copying homework again. I, I'm with Dramatise as well. Um, I, I just think it, it's a really good uh, race for her in terms of how mm. it sets up in terms of she's going to get the sex allowance and the three-year-old allowance. And she's a, we know she's a proper sprinter. We saw that at York last year. She didn't stay the six. And look, that we've got to be honest about that. The sprinting scene across Europe is in a desperate state at the moment. So it's crying out for a, 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 maybe a young horse to come through. I think there's lots of pace in the race. The Platinum Queen is, is there as well. Uh, Living the Dream is there as well. And I think those horses may be drawn... Um, middle to high are going to be really suited to this as well. I think if you're drawn very low, it could the race might just kind of develop away from you. She's drawn right bang in the middle in 10. William Buick rides for um, for Carl Burke. Carl Burke's a, a seriously good trainer. Uh, I think we're going to see how good he is in the next couple of years because he's getting better and better stock. And look, she's run well fresh as well. She yeah. won first time out as a two-year-old last season. I think then she had nearly a, a two and a half month break before she went to the Breeders' Cup and ran very well there. So yeah, I just think in a, in a division that looks Looks very weak at the moment with her getting all the allowances and the champion jockey, the champion jockey 
booked. Uh, I think Dramatise will take an awful lot of beating. And I should say, we did a stable tour on AtTheRaces.com with Carl Burke at the start of the year. And he, this is going back in April. And he said this was the first race she'd run in. So that just goes to maybe suggest that everything's gone according to plan since. Nice plug. You're doing my job for me there. <laughs> so very well done. I'm always fearful when you two start agreeing in this way. And especially for a race of this nature, because I'm taking on the pair of you two with the favourite, with the Platinum Queen, where yes, she has those different variables of the yard, the ownership. There's going to be the bigger targets for her than down the line, but she sold for a huge mm. price tag. So naturally, they're going to be hoping that there should be more to come from her then in her three-year-old season. And she is, we talk about the sprinting division and the fact that it just needs that bit of a superstar from this country. I still think she can prove up to being that even as a three-year-old, where the concern is when they were such a good two-year-old, you think, God, were they all about precocity? I don't think she was though I just think she is something special and as I say this might just be kind of the first run then of the season for her she's probably going to get taken on for the lead but she has the class where she can make it count and she just answered the call for every single task that was thrown to her last year running eight times winning four of them the group one win against her elder in the Prix de l'Abbé which was I know that she had the bias on her side in terms of the draw and it wasn't the strongest of group ones either but even so she just proved her resilience you can draw a line through her last run in the breeders cup she was drawn widest of all and taken on for the lead and it just yeah you just knew that her fate straight away as soon as the draw came out for her then but on this switch of yards i think she's going to prove to be the most talented sprinter so the platinum queen for me and you are both with dramatized so we're we're a bit of differing opinions then in that race but again do let us know your own selections for what is a wide open sprint in the comment section below we're going to head over to the sky pad now where i'm going to get the lads queen and bets as well as their best bets for the weekend so we're only four weeks away from Royal Ascot and on this week's show we're going to be previewing the curtain raiser of the meeting. This is the Queen Anne, won by Baid last year. Declan, you're up first for your selection. Uh, yeah, safe to say there's no Baid this year, but it's a competitive race. Look, Modern Games uh, is the horse to beat after winning the lockage last year and maybe the stiff nature of Ascot given... Um, given he got a little bit lost, um, not lost, but given he needed, looked like he needed all the trip uh, uh, at Newbury to get on top, the, the stiff nature of Ascot will suit him well. Uh, I tried to look for a horse at a big price that could sneak into, into the places, but I couldn't find one, so I'm going to play it relatively safe. I think of all those horses to the fore in the market, Erevan is the horse I could see um, shortening up significantly. Now, I think he's due to run on Monday in the pre-Dispahan, um, and, you know, I'd be expecting a lot more I wouldn't be too worried that he was beaten on his seasonal debut last time out. I think it was at Saint Clou. Um, he's just Jean Claude Rouge is a master trainer, likes to take his time. Uh, at the races.com, did a stable tour with Rouge at the start of the season, and he mentioned this is a possible target for his horse. It's uh, the horse's only entry at the Royal Meeting as well. We're going to find out a, uh, an awful lot more on Monday. But go back to his form last season as a three year old. He was third behind Inspire in the pre Jacques Lamarois and then bolted up in the pre Daniel Wildenstein. Uh, he's by Dubawi, his dam was at Ervedra, who was a top class filly for the Aga Khan going back a few seasons ago, uh, physically and on pedigree. I think I can see him getting um, getting better this season in the care of a top class trainer. So I think uh, Erevan is the horse for me at the moment, and he post. Good case made, but the thing that impressed me most was your French pronunciations. <laughs> more change. so than anything else. That was very, you must have been practicing. So I was more impressed by that than anything else, though, by Declan Sam, but your own selection. Yeah, cracker to start us off at Royal Ascot. Isn't this race on paper? We're obviously a few weeks out, but Modern Games rightfully makes the market after what he's achieved so far this season. But in spiral for me, I guess there's some concerns about the fact that she didn't make her seasonal reappearance. But having read John Gosden's comics previously, she went to Royal Ascot fresh last year and managed to absolutely scoot in. Um, I'm not particularly concerned she won on debut first time out. I actually think first time out is probably the chance to catch her. Maybe she just needs that little bit extra time. Um, comments after last year about her coming into her coat a little bit late, the cold sort of spring that we'd had, seems to be pretty replicated for this year. On the form book as well, she's achieved plenty in her, in her wins going through her short career so far to date. But I just thought, I don't necessarily think she's necessarily going to be getting much shorter as a price. Um, but 
she was just a bit more interesting to me. I didn't really want to back modern games. I kind of like the fact that she'll arrive here fresh. And John Gosden, he is an absolute master. Him and Thady, obviously, now on the licence. Um, he's an absolute master at getting these horses right for the big days. And I think she's another horse that will have a very, very big season. My Prospero, I was quite keen on, but I've got a feeling they're going to go up in trip. You know, watching that run back at the, in the lock inch will definitely come on for the run, but I think a mile might just be too short now. Yeah, and I really hope that that's going to be the case, though, because I agree that that's exactly the way that he shaped at Newbury at the weekend. And I'm also hoping that because I think that the Haggis team have a better miler potentially for this season in their camp, and that's going to be my selection, Maljum, mm -hmm. or as you cannot forget about. And he has just been a little bit forgotten about because obviously we haven't seen him since Royal Ascot last year. Now a four year old, and he was so unlucky when he was fourth in the St. James's Palace at Royal Ascot. He took the brave man's route after getting that tardy start, but the gamble just didn't pay off on that occasion, unfortunately. But he rattled home, but just ran out of time. And the general consensus was that he probably should have won that. But, of course, didn't get to see him subsequently with my Prospero, however we're meant to be pronouncing that, wherever we're meant to be getting the accent on, and now hopefully going up in trip. I think that's going to pave the way then for Maljum to be the number one miler for the win. William Haggis Yard. So they are our selections for the Queen Anne. Do let us know your own best bets for the Queen Anne at this stage in the comments section below. See, Maljun for me, Declan has gone with Erevan and Sam with Inspiral. Now it's time for our best bets of the weekend. So our nap next best and our long shot deck step up to the plate. Yes, keeping it pretty straightforward this week. The nap's going to be a little big bear for me in the sandy lane at Haydock. I'm praying Frankie just lets him stride on and use himself. If he comes back to anywhere near the level of the form of his Phoenix Stakes when last year he's going to obliterate this field. Uh, so yeah, little big bear. Frankie, baby, send them on, please. Uh, the next best then is going to be Royal Scotsman in the Irish 2000 Guineas. Looks a weak renewal. I think he's got the best form in the race. He's going to need to settle, but Jamie Spencer's hands, I hope, will do that for us. Uh, hopefully, Jamie can maybe just get him to miss the gates half a beat and get cover for him. I think he's the best horse in the race. Uh, he ran an incredible race in the Guineas, given how keen he was and, and given that later in the contest, it all developed away for him. Back on a faster surface, I think he can go well. And the long shot then is also going to be in the Guineas. It's going to be Gallagher. On. Uh, this lad ran a really nice race in the Guineas. He was badly squeezed out at the start and considering that I thought he ran very well. He was a little bit hit and miss in his juvenile campaign last season but uh, as the season went on his form became more consistent and he kept on progressing. He was a huge drifter on his seasonal debut in the Burden Stakes at Newcastle but ran very well and then had a career best in the, in the Guineas at Newmarket. Back on a faster surface at a track in the corner that he's already won at I can see Galler on with Colin Keane booked uh, going very well should Royal Scotsman and the likes kind of underperform. Yeah, and a race where it looks uh, like, say, a, a good race for a play of that nature mm. anyway. So they were Dex's three best bets for the weekend. Sam, your own, please. Well, there's only one horse I can nap here, Kate, isn't it? All three of us in agreement. <laughs> yep. <with Elizabeth. laughs> Declan's made it his nap. So this horse is carrying a hell of a penalty, but Frankie Dettori will overcome that. And I think we'll see a flying dismount up at Haydock from him. And, you know, Declan's already made a very articulate case. I haven't got too much more to add. Uh, but the horse I will want to talk about in a bit more detail is Marban in the 710 at Salisbury, which is actually quite an interesting listed race uh, for, albeit it might get missed being that late mm. on a Saturday. Um, last two renewals of this race have gone to three-year-olds uh, this horse is the only three-year-old in the race and you go back through the form book, fifth in the Dewhurst behind Chaldine last season, will definitely appreciate the ground, is a course winner at the track as well one over the distance, um, I think he'll put up a really big performance is one to, to put into the notebook might just fall below that sort of top class level uh, but has had the benefit of a run at Ascot which he probably was entitled to need uh, and then my long shot we've already discussed this horse but Keishamar I just really fancy could potentially be the unexposed joker in the pack and take a massive step forward at an each way price hopefully we might get a bit bigger than 18s on the day might drift out a little bit we shall see yeah, but even then with 18s, we will not be cribbing that whatsoever. And also a bit of Salisbury thrown in there for something a bit different anyway. Now, my own best bets for the weekend. My nap is actually going to be the Platinum Queen in what is a wide open sprint. But that group two than up at Haydock in the Temple Stakes to hopefully show even better form as a strengthened up three-year-old this season for new connections. And as I say, even better than her two-year-old form, which was brilliant anyway. So hopefully she's going to prove the fastest of the fast again. Proud and regal 
Eagle is then my next best bet from an each way perspective in the Irish 2000 guineas. Uh, I kind of struggle with a next best because little big bear for all that we are keen and mm -hmm. confident on him. He's just got that blowout potential still rather than proud and regal. I think he's just a bit more of a solid play with him being laid out for the race from quite a way out and his form at the track also standing him in good stead. And my long shot is just bring it in the 225 at Haydock, the Silver Bowl Heritage Handicap over a mile. Now, the ground we are expecting to be pretty rattling. So when the betting opened up for this race, I thought, oh, 16 to 1, ideal. He did shorten up, but I'm pleased to see we're still getting that price about him now anyway. He won his second handicap start before being undone on the soft ground next time out, but he was much happier on quicker ground last time out. Second behind Chelsea Green at Newmarket last weekend. She looks sandring and bound. So off of a one pound high mark, conditions to suit, just bring it looks a big price to me or as I say, hopefully he will stick at that price anyway. So they are all of our best bets then for the weekend. It was a jam packed weekend. A big thank you to Declan and to Sam for all of their hard work as per usual. A big thank you to you for watching. Again, do let us know all of your best bets, including your queen and best bets and your best bets for the weekend, of course, as well. We'll be back next week where we will be previewing the Derby as well as further Royal Ascot chat.